Okay, um, I am wanting to develop a um, water over. Um, I have paints mixed up. Three paints. And here they are. And um, the tape paper is taped to this board. And I have a, a place here where I can, uh, a basin where I can drip the paint. Um, so what I want to do is initially take this big brush and just wet the paper very lightly, not too wet, just enough. And here's a little piece of hair. Sometimes these big brushes, they have little hairs in them or it gets in the water. Okay, so that's wet, and I'm going to take a paper towel. Um, I'll regularly clean along the edges, because when the paint and the water go to the edge of the tape, it can pool. It can pool. I want to make sure there's no dirt. And uh, create... So the first thing I'm going to do is put some yellow on here. I want the yellow more or less on the whole. Oh, another hair. It's, a, it's wonderful to have sable brushes, and this is a very good sable brush. But sometimes sable is a natural animal, and sometimes a hair does come out. I don't have cats, so I can't blame them on cats. So I'm going to put down, first of all, some yellow. And I'm going to spread it a little bit to make it kind of even. And I'm letting things drip down. And one of the things I'm going to do then is take my paper towel and I'm going to create an area of, I'm softly removing some yellow in the center of where the sun might be. So this is going to be, uh, there's a hair there. I'm going to, so I want the, um, some white light for a value contrast to be in this area here. Okay, I'm going to take my brush again. brush again. So the next thing I want to do is um, take some of this orange and put some color toward the center. So usually what will happen is that you have some yellow closest to the white light. And I want this a little uneven with the sun more on the left side. And so I'm going to spread this again. See, I'm dripping it into the pan here, so the basin that I made. A 
letting the color distribute fairly evenly and spread into the yellow. I think I need a little more yellow up here. I think I'm going to put the yellow across here and let that spread a little bit more and just maybe take a tiny bit out of the center because I want the orange to spread a little bit in it but not completely. I think I need a little more yellow here. On the bottom. So I'm going to try again. Spread a little bit more. When I have my spray done, um, I'm going to take that and, and diffuse that color. Yeah, I need to put some more water in there. Let me just put some more water in there. Am I putting it in my big bucket of water here? Yeah. The thing is that I want to have some variation. So I'm going to spray. I'll change the of a horizon line. Let's see how that is now. And I'll move again. I'm going to take some of my paper towel, okay, which has creates some soft edges. And create softly. Some space for the white. Okay, dry again just a little bit more. A little bit more until I feel satisfied with it. And this is how you let the watercolor help you do the painting itself. over the spray gun and we're going to remove that little line there in the center. Okay, over here on the edge, very important that near the edge all this watercolor is removed just above the tape because otherwise as everything else dries and, and this pool of water is sitting there next to the tape, then that water will create a backflow and make a bloom, which can completely ruin your painting. So you're going to have a mat when you frame this anyway, and there'll be a little space of white paper under the mat. So I think you can see what I've done there. I want a little more lightness. Okay, you see that? Now the next thing I want to do is create, I'm going to get myself a clean paper towel for the next stage. Clean my brush in case there are any pieces of lint or hair on it. Any place here where I might have something in the paint. Okay, make sure that's really clean. Good. I'm going to take the red now, this red paint, and I'm going to Put some red paint on both sides. 
leaving some of that yellow and leaving some of that orange. Again, it'll be a little uneven and there'll be more red toward a horizon. I haven't decided whether the horizon will be up here or down here, but anyway, toward the center, I'm going to put a little bit more. Yep. Maybe a little bit more in the corners. Usually I like my corners to be a little darker than um, the rest of the painting because that helps to keep the viewer's eye from roaming out of the canvas or the paper. We want the viewer's eye to stay more in the center. So, doing the same thing again. Letting the paint flow and mix on its own. And anywhere that I think it needs a little more, I think around the horizon line, I'm going to want some more. So let me see if I can get some flow in the center. And, or not in the center exactly, but where there might be horizon. There's a little bit too much yellow here, so I'm going to put a little bit more there, paint. Let's see how we do that. And that'll flow along there. I haven't even sketched the idea of a painting yet, but a lot of times I like the paint to create a background. And then I follow along with that, with whatever it creates. I, I, I consider watercolor a partner in a dance. And I like to let the watercolor lead in that dance, at least in some of the stages. And then every now and then, maybe I'll lead There's some detail that I want to put in. But now here in the center, I don't want such a hard line. So I'm softening it here. I'm going to carry a little bit out here with a paper towel. It's pretty nice. A little bit here and there. There's some paint, extra paint that's making a little bit of a puddle of too much paint. Again, I'm softening the edges here. Um, I want to soften some edges. Now see what happens um, when you spray on paint that is drying, it will create some little texture marks, which are fine, but in this case, yeah, there's a, another hair from the brush. color every now and then where I see that I might want a little less. 
maybe in the center here and we'll let it have as if the sun was right in this area. I'm going to smooth this out with my finger because the spray then left a little spot. And just do a bit more to move that paint around so that it's there. Okay. So this is the way, one way. More here, a little more white here, maybe a little bit more here, maybe a little bit more here. You know, there's no right and wrong. The main thing that's necessary is to take care of these edges as, as it's, you know, the paper is now going. It's bulging a little in the center, which is normal uh, because it's wet and it's buckling a little bit. So then more paint is going toward the edges. And so it's important that we not have it um, puddle on the tape. I've got a little tiny bit of um, paint here and here. Yeah, good. So here you have a little tiny video to show how one can create the impression of the sun setting. Maybe there'll be a line here for the horizon, and then one can create water and sunset. Um, now I might want to just do a little bit more color because I'm liking the idea that it's a little in, a little more color, a little more orange. I don't have very much orange so I think I want to do just a little bit more and soften that edge and let it blend. And I'll do a little more of the red. A little more red. It's actually a rose matter. It's called rose matter. And over in this corner, I need a little more. I need a little more. Um, over in this corner, too, to get the gradation. So I'm using a lot of paper towels, you can see. So I'm going to have a little more red over there, let that come down, not too much, but somewhat, and I can spray a little bit. I want to keep most of the color down on this end, so I can spray a little bit. And let some of it come down. And I still want to keep that open area on that side. Have a little more of the red here. There you go. Just so that it's a little more intense over on that side. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use the paper towel. I just want a little variation. I don't want it too even. 
There. Just starting to. There. Well, I think that's probably the end of this little demonstration. I already did one, and it's dry, which I'll show you. As you know, it always dries lighter. The paint always dries lighter. But these three colors were done. Um, you can see how much lighter it dried. And uh, one could create a nice water scene with the sun setting. Um, after the paper dries, you can paint the scene over it. Okay, so we'll just get it in good shape for ready, being ready for drying. Nothing, never any pool of water here on the edge. You can see how, how the paper buckles a little bit and how paint collects next to the tape. And that really does have to be removed to avoid a bloom. Sometimes one wants a bloom for one reason or another in part of the paint, in some area of the paint. <laughs> like the creation of a texture. Or... There we go. I hope you enjoyed that.